So uh, the goals for our time together is you're going to learn about the features of Wakelet and then also gain some ideas for using them, using Wakelet to engage your diverse learners, especially during this distance learning time. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to do that now. And then also, you know, maybe some ideas you can use when you get back to uh, what we would say regular school, back to normal school, where you get to see your darlings face to face. So uh, with that being said, we're going to dive in and talk about Wakelet. If you're not familiar with Wakelet, it is, as Marianne pointed out, is a free platform, which means that is my favorite price. Free is always my favorite price. Um, and it's something you and your students can use. And we'll talk about how you can use it as well as your students. And the great thing is, is the Wakelet allows you to gather anything from that's available on the web and collect it. So it's a collection tool. So initially when Wakelet was created, it was created as a bookmarking tool on website for websites. And a lot of people were using it to gather their family recipes or plan for family trips. And then Wakelet realized, wait a second, educators are doing some really cool stuff. And so they developed their education arm and they're doing a lot of support with educators and uh, built this community. So three steps to getting started. So the first thing is that you can bookmark anything. Anything that's available on the web that has a URL, um, especially, and we'll talk about some other formatted uh, resources, can be gathered. Uh, so if you are like me and you're always bookmarking things and then you're like, wait, that's not organized. I don't know where's what and all of that. This is a way for you to organize your resources or your bookmarks. Secondly, the, the main thing is that you can, not only can you organize, but you can curate it and pull it into different collections. So that's really what the, the power of Wakelet is, that you can create a collection and you can easily share it with just about anyone. So if I wanna share and collaborate, I can do that. So that's what we're gonna talk about, how you can use this with your students, because you can easily share it with uh, Google uh, Classroom as well as Microsoft Teams. So this means it's something you can pull a collection together of different things and then you can push it out to your students very easily. And they also have the ability to collaborate. So that means if you're a co-teacher, and you're working with your teammates um, that co-teaches with you and is pushing in and you want to be able to share resources, that's easy to do. But if you're also a subject area expert and you're the maybe the lead of your PLC and you need to start pulling resources together for planning for social studies, science, math, or ELA, you could use this tool to start pulling those resources together for some instructional planning. So that's it. I mean, it's that simple. It's, you know, grab those bookmarks, um, organize them, and then share them. That's the way it works. But the best part is, is it integrates with all of your favorite apps. So we've got the folks that love to use all different types of tools, and we'll talk about how you can use them with those different tools. So if you have any questions, please make sure that you do use that um, Q&A uh, and ask away. Um, this is very informal, so if you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. So what we're gonna do is I've uh, got this little walkthrough video here. That's just in case that we have an issue with the internet because the internet's on the struggle bus sometimes. So, but I'm gonna go live, but I've also got screenshots of everything in the presentation that you guys can go back to uh, at your leisure. The link to the presentation will be shared at the end of our session. So you're gonna go to wakelet.com and you're going to sign up because it's free and that's what you wanna do. So when you sign up, it's gonna ask you, how do you wanna sign up? And of course you wanna pick, do you wanna use Google, Microsoft or connect with your Facebook, depending on how you're gonna use it. Since you're gonna be using it for classroom uh, instruction, I would suggest if you're a Google school, go Google. If you are a Microsoft school, go Microsoft. I would not connect it to your Facebook just on the off chance that something shows up that you don't want your kiddos to see. So I would do that as a separate account, okay? So we're gonna go with continue with Google, but I've already got an account, so I'm gonna do that. Now you can also just sign up with email, but I love the fact that I can just easily go back to my Google uh, account and it's gonna remember me, no problem. So I'm gonna log in with my Google account uh, and pick the right one. I've got a couple of identities. Okay, and we're gonna log in. So once you're in Wakelet, you're going to see that it takes you to your landing page, which is your bookmark collection. And so I have created collections, but I've also bookmarked things. So just, I'm gonna walk you guys through what it looks like here, and then we're gonna talk about ways you can use this with your students. So right now I've got, these are some collections I've created. So when I do training with teachers, I've often used this. It's really cool to pull in um, collections of tweets and stuff. So if you're using social media, so if you wanted to grab, you had a school event and you wanted to capture all of the tweets that were shared about that event, you can do that, for example, 
Um, I did that for um, a conference that I did. I grabbed everything that had uh, my hashtag and the, the event that I was attending there so I could capture those tweets. But you can use, uh, use this for all different things. So this is my dashboard. These are the ones I have. So um, I'm going to show you that you can obviously create yourself a profile. So you might want to do that and put a little bit about you because it also has a little bit like Pinterest. If you're a Pinterest user, you can follow people and have people follow you and see what your collections look like. So we're going to go in here. We're going to create our first collection. So when I hit that, you're going to see that it's going to ask me to add a cover image, which they have a gallery or I can upload one and, and uh, I'll show you how I've created some, but this is really cool. They've got unsplash and I can search for this. So I always look for something that's techie. Uh, and I think that's a pretty cool picture right there. And Unsplash is a free, uh, we're going to go back one. Hold on. I want to grab that one. There we go. It was taking me to the page so I could see the other photos that that person had. So I grabbed this picture. It's a really slick picture. Now I've got a cover image. Um, you can create your own and add it. So I use my Bitmoji in mine and I've done some other covers, but I'm gonna give this title a collection. So this is a, my GPB demo and I'm gonna call it number two because I was playing around earlier for those screenshots and I can write a description of what it is. So for you, it might be, this is unit one and all the resources you wanna pull together, unit two, it could be a, re, uh, a uh, review, it could be project ideas, um, whatever you want it to be, you can, you can always change this if you want. So you're going to give it a description and now we're going to go to this plus. So this is the magic button. That plus allows me to add anything that's on here to it. So I could easily grab a URL. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open up my website. I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it right here. Here's what's cool about this is that it's gonna give me a little mini preview of whatever elements I add in there. So this is what makes it visually interesting and it's a lot more accessible for your students. So I love HyperDocs and if you've never used HyperDocs, that's the idea where you take a Google Doc, whether it's a slide deck or um, docs or sheets to create an interactive self-paced lesson. The idea that you put everything that the students need to do into one document. The problem with that is, and now Google has added the ability that if you hover over something that's got a hyperlink, it'll give you a little preview. But oftentimes, kids don't know what to click on and where to go. This allows me to get a preview of whatever I add. So now I'm going to add something else. I can add text. So I'm also just going to borrow from over here. So I'm just going to grab this little first paragraph here. Okay, and I'm just going to paste this in here. You'll notice I can copy and paste text from anywhere. So this is really cool if you want to use maybe a Time article or news, excuse me, a news, uh, Newsella article or some other text that you found. Maybe you've got a PDF laying somewhere, you know, saved on your desktop that you use that has your favorite articles. Uh, maybe it's excerpts or favorite poetry or history lessons. You can copy and paste any text you want into this text box. And notice I can even give it some formatting, bold, italicized, underline. I can make headers, so one and two levels, so if I want to do that. I can even do bullet lists, and I can hyperlink inside of my text. So I can really uh, jazz that up if I want, and I can also even use emojis, which is really cool. So I do like to do that. If you're not familiar with uh, using this emoji uh, uh, keyboard extension, it's amazing. So I can grab emojis, and I can add those in. So those can serve as visual bullets for your students. Really great uh, tool to use it for your students that are diverse, you know, diverse learners, because then they can know to look for certain things when they see those bullet points. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And I've got my text box now here, right? Now I'm going to go to my next one and I can add in a video from YouTube. This works well if your school has YouTube unblocked. If your school is blocked, then I would not use this. But if you are, if your students have the ability to, with their logins, access YouTube on their devices, then you can do that. So I can go to YouTube and I can search YouTube, okay? Or I can um, paste in the link and it will put a YouTube video there. Um, I can pull in those tweets like I mentioned. I can go to my bookmarks, which means it's gonna go back to anything I've saved. I mean, oh yeah, I saved all those uh, sites that I found on um, AR and VR in the classroom and now I wanna pull it into my collection. I can also upload any images that I want. So this is where you could put a graphic that you want students to look at. So whether it's a map, or a diagram, you can upload an image. 
You can also upload a PDF, which means they have access to it if you want them to be able to take a look at it. So right now I can build out my entire lesson with all of the resources I have in here. Now I'm an avid lover of Google Classroom. I, we did a Google Classroom session earlier um, when we started doing these webinars. I love Google Classroom, but one of the things that students struggle with is the fact that when you post links in there, okay, if you want them to do them in order on one given assignment, you have to put the links in the right order and you do not have the ability to reorder them, which can be problematic. And it's also hard to get students to go, hey, this is step one, step two, step two, three, and so forth. So here, because I can easily reorder this, I can add in text boxes, be like, this is step one, do this. This is step two, do this, okay? So I can pull anything from my Google Drive or my OneDrive. So if I've already got a rubric, I've already got a practice script, I've already got um, the questions that I want them to fill out, I can add them in there as well. The other really cool thing is if you're a Flipgrid user, and we also talked about Flipgrid earlier on one of our webinars, you can put a Flipgrid directly in here. So you've got so many options of what you can do. But here's what I'm talking about, that reorder option. I can move this to the top or just up and down if I want. This comes in handy if you're just, when you're planning and you're pulling in resources and then you realize, oh wait, I want them to read this article first and then this one second and I'm gonna reorder them, okay? This also comes in handy if you wanna make a copy of this and you, we know when we plan differentiated lessons, we usually plan for the middle and then we differentiate high or low depending on our diverse learners. So what I can do is I can make a master one that has all of my resources in it and then I can reorder them and change uh, the elements that are inside of it. It's very easy for me to go in here and edit this box again, change out any of that content. So I can reorder them, I can change the layout, <clears throat> excuse me, which right now I'm in media view, which means it's gonna show all the interactive content. I can go to compact view, which means it's gonna make these elements a little bit smaller. I can go to grid view, this is really kind of cool. So if you wanna do um, an end of the year kind of choose your own adventure and you have different tasks that you want students to look at. You could also use this for a choice board um, or just different, a different way to present articles you want your students to engage in. And um, I can go to the mood board, which is even uh, a larger option for like a choice board. So I, if I want it to be linear and I want it to be step by step by step, I'm gonna go here to this compact view so that students know I'm gonna go here, here and here. And I can add in text boxes that say, this is step one, this is step two. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. So here's what one looks like. And you might be thinking, okay, this is kind of cool, but how does this, how do I share this with my students? So right now I've got this as a private collection. Remember I said, this is kind of like Pinterest. So you have options to share this and make it be public, which means that anybody can search for it and they can find it. And we'll talk about how you can search. The other option is unlisted, which means if you're creating resources that you only want to share with your students, you can leave it as an unlisted resource, which means the link is available, but nobody's going to find it if they're searching right now. Okay. So if I go here and I'm going to change this to public. Okay. Here's another important thing. I can add a background image. So if I want to do this for branding or so color coding, I have one of my schools that has different color classes, red, yellow, green, and blue. And they might have built out, depending on their gifted class and their regular ed class and their student support class, they might want to put a background image that is that color so that it kind of pops and they know that that's the one that they've created for that particular class. So the other cool thing is I can enable copying, which means if I share this out with the world and I think this is a fantastic collection of resources, I can allow somebody else to copy it, which means that they're not going to mess with mine, but they can get a copy of it. And then once you copy it, you can edit it. Think of it like how you go out and you get a copy of someone's Google Doc. So I've got all this kind of squared away here and I didn't put a lot in here, but you can go here and jazz it up. And I'm gonna show you an example of one where I've uh, added some more elements. So I'm gonna click done and I've created my collection. So as you can see, I've got this collection here. There's my information. It shows that it's visibility, there's the world, it's out there. This is where the magic comes in and this is where I think this is so powerful to support your diverse learners. It has Immersive Reader built into Wakelet. If you are not familiar with Immersive Reader, it is the ability for me to, when you see this icon, it's a Microsoft um, Office tool that they built into OneNote um, and PowerPoint and uh, Word, but they've also made it a tool that's available in third-party apps, including Flipgrid and now Wakelet and a number of other tools. So anytime you see this little book with the speaker, if I click on this, 
it's going to pull up the immersive reader tool. So now I've made where there was a, a paragraph that maybe my emerging learners aren't able to read on their own. If they click on it, you just have to get them to understand when you see that little icon, guys, kick, click on that. It's going to pull this up and notice it pulled in all of the text I had there. I can choose to play Red this. Heart, Jennifer Hall, Jen, has been an educator. Notice it's going to read aloud for me. So now this uh, information is accessible to more of my learners. I can go down here and I can change female to male voice. I can slow it down or speed it up if I want. I can also go over here and I can choose my text preferences, which means I can adjust the size of the text to be a little bit more uh, smaller or larger. So for your students that are visually impaired that might need that larger text, I have the ability to do that. I have uh, spacing in, uh, on, but if I close it back, that's what a typical paragraph looks like. But if maybe I'm a dyslexic reader and that's really hard for me to, um, to get all of that text and to understand it, I can choose to increase the spacing that helps me and I can change the font as well that might be something easier for me to read but maybe i'm also a student that has visual discrimination issues and i have a teammate that has the uh struggles with really bright screens her eyes struggle with this so you can go in here and i can choose it to do black with white text and that might be something that's easier and more accessible for your students okay and you can customize this now what's cool about um immersive reader and it being used on wakelet in the web like this once I've set my preferences as a student, the next time I click in, it's gonna already be there. So here's a couple other things I wanna show if you're not familiar with Immersive Reader, is that I can go in here and I can label, I can look at the syllables, I can label the parts of speech. So if I'm learning my, if I'm a language learner or if elementary school and you're working on parts of speech, I can go in here and I can tag the parts of speech uh, so that I know what the verbs are, the adverbs and everything. As a former language arts teacher, I think that is so, so cool. Now, the other thing that I can do here is maybe I've got students in my class that are Spanish speakers or French. I can go down here and I can change the language to be, uh, to convert it. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna change it to French uh, from Canada. So if I do that, I wanna say change the entire document. Now, I've only put it in English, but now here it is. I've got this in French and I can read this. What's really cool is I can read it on my own if I just needed the translation or if I need it read to me. Jennifer Hall, Jean, est éducatrice depuis plus de 22 ans. It will also play uh, the audio file in that language. So that to me, again, is making this more accessible and I'm being able to push out content and have all of my students participate in this and it's accessible for them. I can't adjust the line focus if again, I'm, uh, Maybe I, I struggle, I have you know, ADHD students that really are like, I can't focus, it's too much text on the screen. I can go down and do line focus so that I'm really just focusing at one line at a time. And now when I play it, now it's really kind of helping me to hone in and pay attention right there. The other cool thing is, and let's turn this back off and I'm gonna go off of line focus. And I'm gonna go up here to this other, one more option, which is the picture dictionary. Now the picker, picture dictionary works on certain words that if you click on them, it will give you a visualization. So this is also helping with that language acquisition for certain, for students. I can, not every word, but some words that might have a visual cue to understand what the word is, is available and that's an immersive reader as well. So right now, I think that that is what really makes Wakelet such a cool tool is that I can drop in some text, drop in my links, and while I've got my, this is more accessible to my students. So let's take a look at an example of one of the lessons that I've done. So while I'm going to that, I wanna pause for a second and see if we got any questions. Jen, someone was asking, do students need Wakelet accounts? And I said, not necessarily, but do you recommend students to get an account? Okay, so, all right, great question, and actually, Students do not need to have a Wakelet account. Um, over thir 13 and over, you can create an account and use one, but you do not have to have an account to participate as a collaborator in someone else. In like if the teacher cre uh, um, if a teacher creates it and shares it out, they can add to it with an anonymously. For example, I worked with a technology teacher and um, they were doing a task where the kids had to do different coding exercises and she wanted to collect them all in one place where she could go back and play them all and everybody would be able to see them. So she created a uh, Wakelet collection 
shared out the link and it allowed them the kids did not have to create an account they were able to paste in their link and it added to their collection so 13 and over yes you can create one but it's not required for you to add to it or view it great question so i'm going to go um over here back to my home someone asked okay. how the students set their preferences if they don't have an account that preferences piece is in immersive reader that's a, that's a web-based plugin that when you click on Immersive Reader, it remembers it on your computer. Great question. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and take a look at this HyperDocs lesson that I created a while ago. So I love HyperDocs and I've done several trainings on HyperDocs and um, I was gonna be going to a, a conference and doing this session and then Wakelet was really kind of kicking off and I was like, I bet I could create a really cool lesson inside of Wakelet HyperDoc style and I shared it with at that session and people were like, whoa, because now you've leveled it up even more. So when we talk about a HyperDocs lesson, the idea is that um, this one is the 5e e model. So you're going through here, notice there's all of those elements. Anytime there is text in a box, I can read that. So I'm gonna go here, there's that engage. I've included a video that introduces what HyperDocs is. I've gone to explore, now you're gonna level up. I put a link in here to a deeper dive presentation that I want students to go through on their own pace. So this is a model of how you do a HyperDoc lesson and I did mine actually on HyperDocs. It's the best way to learn about it. Um, then the explain is going a little bit deeper. I've got some more resources. The respond and reflection, I've got links in here for them to participate during the lesson. Now we're getting into the apply and there's some more instructions. And again, if I click on this, I can go in here and I can customize those settings if I want to have it read aloud for me, okay? Um, I can go down here, I've got the assessment tool, so I've got a link in here to a quizzes. So now that students have gone through this self-paced lesson, this is great for centers and definitely for differentiated lessons is that you can add in things like quizzes. So if, you, if you're not familiar with quizzes, you should check out uh, our previous session that we did on assessment tools, Dana and I did a little app smackdown and talked about our favorite assessment tools last time. So you can add in that assessment and put in that link and it take with the instructions and there it goes. And then I've got the reflection and I've added in Flipgrid and I created this before Flipgrid was actually embedded in it. And now that's an option. Um, and I can uh, put extension resources as well. So this is a self paced lesson that I can easily share with my students um hyperdoc style so you're wondering all right you said you could do contributors how do people get to add to it so here's how you do that if i wanted my co-teacher to work with me on this i can go to contributors and i've got a couple of ways to let people participate so i can go in here and i can copy this link and i can share that into google classroom and say hey you can add to this um, i can email it um, if they're on Wakelet, I could also add their name and that means that they, it will show up as one of the ones they have access to. I can copy this code as well. I can go back and this is what's cool is if I invite students to work on it and I set a deadline and I wanna go back in, um, I can go back in and remove those collaborators after the fact. So like you could let, you know, have it open for a little while and then change it out. Um, uh, let's see, it says, is Immersive Reader already built into Wakelet or do we have to add on like Google Docs has add-ons? No, it is. As long as you copy and paste any text directly into that text box on Wakelet, you're going to see that Immersive Reader feature. Um, if you put in quizzes, which setting do we need to use? Great question. You're going to make it a homework assignment. You're going to go in and make it a homework assignment and you're going to set it to be, you know, three weeks out or whatever you guys want uh, to be able to uh, post that in there. Keep in mind, because quizzes only, those only last for like three weeks, that if you were going to use this ongoing, you would need to go in and put in a new quiz code, but you can edit it very easily. Okay, so that's the way I can add contributors. Now, here's the way I can share this with my, uh, if I want. So I can go to these three dots here. So maybe I want to embed this Wakelet collection because this is a collection of all sorts of resources I want my teachers to take a look at. I can embed it on a website. I can actually export this as a PDF so it's printable if you wanted to. Um, I can go in and change my visibility. But here's the other important thing. If I go to share, notice here's my options. I can push it directly into Google Classroom. I can push it directly into Microsoft Teams. I could also tweet it out, share it on Facebook. I could also just copy this link if I wanted to put it into another LMS, if I'm using Canvas or Schoology and I wanted to share this collection there as well. But if I go to Google Classroom, it's gonna pull up 
Google Classroom here. And I'm gonna pick that I want this to go to, it's all about Google Classroom. I want this to be an assignment. Click go. Now, the thing is, is, and you guys should know this if you're using Google Classroom regularly, I'm gonna say this is my GPP demo two. I'm gonna put my instructions here. There it is, that, that link is there, which is publicly viewable, so they do not have to log in to see it and, and engage in the content. And I can go here and actually tag multiple classes. So if I want this to go to my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth periods, I can tag that all at once. Or if I've differentiated this, and this is actually my emerging learner lesson that I've created, and I've got a small group I know that this needs to go to, I could drill down into, instead of all students, and push it out to certain students in my class. And then I'm just going to click Assign. Okay? So I can do that. I can do that with Microsoft Teams as well. Okay? So as you can see, I added in custom logos. I've added in, there's that Wakelet um, feature with Immersive Reader. Anytime you see text, that's going to work. So if I click on that, now that can be read aloud for a student. Okay? What's really cool is it cracks me up that it actually will also read the emojis. So if you have a true uh, visually impaired student, it will actually translate and say heart emoji. So it knows that there's even that icon on the screen. Okay. So I've got all of my stuff here in order and I can easily push this out to students. So as, as we're talking about this stuff, I'm just curious if people are thinking, is this a great way? Are you thinking how you can use this with your students to actually gather resources? Because I have a science, one of my science teachers that she started using this for her unit review because she was like, all right, I want to put a bunch of stuff together and I want to be able to change out the elements. I want to be able to reorder the elements of the way that I want them to look at the resources. I can do it very easily in Wakelet. Whereas if I'm putting it in Teams or Google Classroom, you know, when I make any changes, I can't reorder the links that are uh, in there. I can always change the text in a classroom assignment. But what you can do is if you, if you attach this to an assignment in Google Classroom, you make the changes right here inside of Wakelet, okay? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna zip through here and make sure I, I didn't miss anything. I covered most of the high points. We logged in, we, did, we can create our profile, we did all that. Again, highlighting these are all of the options that you can add in there and they're probably gonna come up with more options, which is super cool. And just to reiterate, adding any text, uh, any instructions, any content and uh, those emojis that immersive reader is going to work. We talked about how you can change out the, the layout, which is really cool. So you can change them out to be more visually interesting. Um, I just reviewed that HyperDoc lesson. Um, and in this presentation, which you guys are going to get, it gives you a link directly to this HyperDoc lesson if you want to take a look at it uh, close up. But I screenshotted each of the elements to show how it breaks down. Um, we talked about how you want to make sure it's either public or unlisted or you can keep it private. If it's a private collection, maybe you're just gathering things for yourself. Again, only you're going to see those. Um, the main things that I think are so powerful are that collaboration option, being able to copy someone else's collection. And I'm going to show you how we can go shopping in a second. That immersive reader, it, to me, is a game changer. Um, I wish when I was in the classroom that I had that for my students. So having the ability to have a Mercer reader right there without having to do an add-on, without having to go anywhere else, as long as you have copy and pasted that text in there, it's going to read it aloud. Now I get asked, will it read if I attach a PDF? It's not going to open up the PDF and read it. It needs to be pet text that you have put inside of a text box, okay? Um, and the ability to embed a collection. So um, I'm going to show you here real quick how you can go shopping. So we're going to go back here to the search from the main page. So I can search for different ones and I can also follow people. So I told you it's kind of like Pinterest. So I'm gonna go over here, there's my profile so I can organize that and I can organize my collections. Like, you know, I've got one, my tech tips for one, one presentations I've done, social media ones. So you can really organize this however you want on your main page so people can find your collections. But I'm also gonna go back over here and show you how I followed a couple of folks. So, um, I follow this, this one uh, educator has a really good design uh, skills and I think it's really cool, but you also have companies that have started uh, creating uh, collections. But uh, Erin right here, we're gonna look at Erin's uh, stuff and it's really cool how she's done hers. She's got all of these mystery wakelets, so kind of like a mystery Skype kind of experience. She's also got templates for newsletters. This is not school, I mean, it's school related, but not in the classroom. But if you wanted to do a team, a team newsletter 
or a grade level newsletter, you can do that very easily and you share it out and your parents can access, uh, access this. Because what's cool is it, you can use it on the web. You, there's also apps for Android and iOS. So you can access these collections and view them on, the, uh, on a mobile device. So she's got all these cool newsletters, meet the teachers, countdown calendars. Just the design look is really cool. But if I decided that, okay, so we're in, uh, we're gonna see more here. Let's see if we can grab us a, there's our main newsletter. I'm gonna view this one right here. So she's got it all set up, but she has the option here to copy it. But she's already put instruction. She's already organized this by what things you might wanna put in your newsletter. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So that is super cool, but you can also search up here. And so um, I had teachers that were working on civil rights when they were looking on the civil rights movement. We just searched civil rights and we were like, okay, let's see what articles are gonna come up. Notice I've got all of these collections already. You can tell how many elements are in it or how many resources. Like this one has 39 and this one only has three. But I could take a look at this one and see if this is one that I wanna look at, okay? And I can see if I like what's on here. So any text up here, again, there's that immersive reader. She's got videos in here. She's got articles, links, and everything. Now notice she's sharing it, but the ability to copy is not there. So you can save it, and then you can still share it out as a reference for your students, but you can't make any modifications to it. But it's a super cool way for you to be able to re uh, look for different resources. Okay? And I can go to my bookmarks and pull in and create more stuff as well. Uh, any group collections, that's where I've collaborated on one, I can actually go back and see which ones I have participated in here as well, or I can join a collection with a code. Remember, there's that code option um, if someone chooses to share it out, okay? So I wanna pop back over here and make sure we highlight a couple of things I might've missed, but definitely some great ways that you guys can use, to, uh, teachers can use Wakelet is obviously collecting those resources we just talked about, and the big focus for me was that interactive lesson. Uh, you can use it for lesson planning, pulling in resources that you share with your teammate. Uh, I liked this idea, documenting your PD, pulling in those tweets that you tweeted um, when you participated on Twitter chats or pulling in any resources that show what you've learned. So when you need to do your T keys, you can pull in and say, here's my documentation. I love that classroom newsletter option. Uh, if you, here's some ways students can use it. Obviously I said 13 and over, can create their own collection. Under 13, you can participate in it, okay? It's great for digital portfolios. And like I said, I had my engineering teacher that had the students uh, participate in a collection and add in their coding projects. And you could, they could go easily go back and check them out. Um, ways librarians and tech coaches can use Wakelet. Um, thinks definitely some great options for resource hubs. I'm thinking when we have, you know, Black History Month, pulling in resources you want students to use. Women's History Month. Uh, we just finished, you know, April was also National Poetry Month, some stuff on poetry. So you could pull in different resources and have that be a collection for students who are like, oh, I know that this is a trusted resource um, here. For the newsletters, again, um, creating a digital library, I love that. So pulling in anything that has a web address. So actually, you can pull in resources from PBS uh, Media into a collection of things you want students to participate in and watch. Um, it's just, like I said, really cool options. Um, again, uh, ways to use it, curating those resources, classroom newsletter as a student assignment and for lesson planning as well. So this actually, once you uh, sign up, you can opt in um, to get a newsletter from them. And this was actually from the news today where they, they highlight some of their favorite collections that have been created. So these were the ones from today, creating a virtual classroom, arts, culture, science, and exercise at home, which we all can participate in, uh, the uh, at-home activities, using Wakelet to organize your instruction, and uh, Twitter in the classroom. So all of these, if you click on the, uh, the icon when you get the presentation, you'll be able to easily take a look at those collections, save them, um, and some of them you can even make copies of and add to them. Um, we talked a lot about the idea of using Wakelet, you know, to level up like HyperDocs. I was very fortunate to um, write a, a, a guest blog post on that very topic. So kind of what I talked through today, here's the link to that blog post um, about leveling up and creating, using Wakelet to create HyperDocs. Uh, I did mention that they do have um, a very active community. Uh, so they have, you can become a community member, which means you're participating in different, they have a lot of webinars, they have live chats, 
Um, so if you're wanting to gain more ideas, you can do that. Um, you can uh, apply to be a Wakelet ambassador. Um, and if you end up presenting on Wakelet uh, in the real world, they even sometimes send you swag. So I had some swag, but I'm not seeing you guys, so I can't give it out right now. Um, and then they even have added this new option, which is the student ambassador, if you start using this actively with your students. So there's links to all of those programs in there for you to check out. I did mention that there is a mobile app that you can get to use this on your phone, both Android and iOS. Um, and that you can also get the extension, which makes it very easy for you. It lives right up here. I can just click on this and I can choose to drop it in. It will bookmark it if I want to create a collection later. So it works on Firefox, Chrome, as well as Edge. So again, super simple. Sign up, start creating and easily share. That's all you got to do. Um, this was kind of like the highlight reel of like the main things I wanted to make sure you understand that you guys captured uh, the power of Wakelet so that hopefully you guys are going to want to ride the Wakelet wave. Um, I've included links in here as well. They're very active on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, you can follow and see what they're sharing. Uh, if you become an ambassador, you also get the info like the behind the scenes testing on new features. And uh, the new feature that was, that was announced today, if you're a Microsoft Teams user, there's now the option in the chat feature. Hit those little three dots, click more, and now Wakelet, you can save stuff directly into a Wakelet collection directly from Microsoft Teams. So they keep adding so much stuff and new resources, and they really welcome the feedback about what they're doing. And so they've got a great help resources as well. So our goal was, let's go, um, was to learn about the features of Wakelet. I think we did that. We covered all the features and hopefully uh, we're going to put a check there that you've gained ideas for using Wakelet to engage your diverse learners. Hopefully you got one or two ideas that you think will help you to use it if you've never used Wakelet before or if you had been using Wakelet you hadn't thought oh I could use it to do that. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, letting me ramble on and talk about Wakelet. Um, but I want to definitely check in and make sure uh, if we have any questions or comments, I'm going to make sure uh, to answer those. But this is the magic link right here. You want to grab it. It's a bit.ly. Uh, you want to go to the bit.ly TT411 hyphen wakelet hyphen GPB and it is case sensitive. Um, and hopefully uh, you can grab that link. And um, I think Dana can drop it in the chat and the Q&A so people yeah, can see I it. Yeah, I actually put it in the chat box. Perfect. Awesome. So everybody should be able to grab that and take a look at it. Awesome. So do we have any other burning questions or was I, did I do all right with uh, covering everything? What, what do we think? Marianne, Dana, we learned some things? Love it. Awesome. So no, no more burning questions. I'm super excited. This is the first time, like I love Wakelet aside from doing, you know, uh, individually showing this to teachers and doing some small groups. This is the first time I've gotten to do like, a full, you know, overview of Wakelet and, and really do a deep dive. And I think it's super, super useful. Awesome. I'm looking to see if there's any, any other questions burning there, ladies? Just a lot of praise. <laughs> I think this is a, to me, this is a game changer. I know we're wrapping up and we're getting to the end of the school year. And so people are winding down, but this is a great way to share out review resources if you want and go ahead and start planning for next year thinking ahead about what you want in your different units and, and start grabbing them together and, and stuff. I think it's super, super cool. I think it speaks a lot to Wakelet too, that it it's so easy that we're really not having to fill that many questions. I mean, it's very self-explanatory in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, it is. It is, it, it is super user-friendly and I mean, you really can't break it. You just, you know, start using it, start playing with it. Um, but I think super, super cool. But the main thing is if you really want to use it for that uh, immersive reader feature, copy any text that you want. And there's not, not that I've seen a limit on the amount of text you could put in there, but obviously you might want to break it up into, you know, sections for kids and not have literally like two pages of text in there anyway. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm looking to see if any other. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. I see Carolyn asked, where were the uh, newsletter templates? Where were they? So that you can search in there and you can see, uh, you can search for newsletters and see what comes up. I, that person that I'm following that does those really cool ones, um, her name is Erin Flanagan. 
um, and she just creates really cool ones. But like, I have a friend of mine, this is my friend, uh, Pam, that she does uh, potty PD when we were in the real world and at schools. Um, and she would actually, she does, uh, uses it to post her stuff. And this actually goes posted at the school, um, but also is housed here. So teachers can go back and check it out. But there's tons of options you can search away. And again, um, under their showcase, they're highlighting like current ones that are really cool. But remember, I pointed out that this is a lot of teachers are using it for education, but you'll also see stuff on here where people are planning their trips when we get to actually go on trips again. Um, but a lot of people use it for, you know, uh, collecting DIY ideas or, or DIY ideas or um, recipes um or home improvement project i mean like different things because you really can connect collect just about anything so under that community showcase they've actually highlighted some different ones you might want to check out and you'll notice that right now with us being out for COVID 19 <clears throat> so much of the stuff they're sharing is about distance learning <laughs>